Hello, this is a reading of Ada Byron Lovelace and the Thinking Machine by Lori Walmark, illustrated by April Chu. And this is about um, an early scientific thinking woman named Ada Lovelace. Uh, this book is an epic, so you can read it. If you log into Epic, you can find it and read it again if you'd like. Ada was born into a world of poetry, but numbers, not words, captured her imagination. Her mother, Lady Byron, had a passion for geometry. In fact, her nickname was the Princess of Parallelograms. But her famous father dominated the household. Beloved for his romantic poems, Lord Byron was a celebrity throughout the world. Unfortunately, Lord Byron was also notorious for his scandalous behavior. So scandalous that Lady Byron bundled up her new baby and fled London to her parents' home, over a hundred miles away. Ada never saw her father again. Now Ada could only know her father through his books, and with her mother often traveling, Ada was lonely. Her journals filled with pages of inventions and equations kept her company. The best part was when her sketches flew off the page and became real. Ada's latest invention was a flying machine. She had built a set of real wings, but could they actually fly? First, Ada needed to compute the wings' power. She broke the problem into steps, surface area and weight, wind, speed, and angles, multiplying and dividing over and over again. Ada loved numbers, but these calculations seemed endless. Wasn't there an easier way? Writing for so long made her fingers hurt. She wriggled them and returned to her numbers. 15 times 12 equals 180. The sky darkened and thunder crashed. Rain pounded on the roof and pelted through the open window. Ada jumped up to latch the shutters. The curtains flapped in and out like sails billowing in the wind. Sails! Sails were like wings. Ada could use this wind to do an experiment for her flying machines. She grabbed her journal and charged out into the howling storm. Again and again, Ada launched her model sailboat across the pond. Each time, she adjusted the sails and studied the effect on the little boat's speed. A storm of numbers and calculations whirled in her mind and spilled onto her pages. Night fell. Ada returned home, muddy, dripping, wet, and triumphant. When Nanny saw Ada, she scolded her for being out in such dreadful weather. She sniffed she didn't care what Lady Byron thought. Girls should not waste their time with math and science and experiments and other such nonsense. But to Ada, it wasn't nonsense at all. Numbers were her friends. After dinner, she sprawled on the floor with her puzzle book. Her head was hot and achy. The numbers squirmed about on the paper, and her eyes felt as if they were filled with sand from the pond. By morning, Ada had a high fever. Nanny didn't scold now. She was worried. She cabled Mama to come home right away. Ada had the measles. Through many long days and nights, Mama read Ada her favorite books. The fever finally broke, but the measles left her paralyzed and blind. To keep Ada's mind sharp, Mama quizzed her on math problems. How much was 80 min 82 minus 25? 18 times 47, 96 divided by 13. Numbers chased around Ada, each other around and around in Ada's head. Mama posed over even har ever harder problems, and Ada solved them all. Problems like how long does it t take to travel to London by carriage? It was an overnight journey, but Ada's flying machine could go much faster than a carriage. If Ada flew, she'd be able to reach London in only a few hours, just in time for tea. Ada's numbers kept her company. 15 times 12 was still 180, and always would be, whether Ada could see or not. 
Over the next few weeks, her eyes got better, but it was three long years before she could put away her crutches. The girl who wanted to fly could not even walk. But Ada still had her numbers, numbers that mattered to her more than ever. Mama recognized her daughter's passion. She hired a tutor so Ada could learn math and at even a higher level. Ada's favorite was Mary Fairfax Somerville, the well-known scientist and mathematician. Somerville was living proof that girls could do math and do it well. She even had even written books on the subject. Another thing girls were not supposed to do. Somerville was so impressed by Ada's sharp reasoning skills, she invited Ada, her mother, and her mother to a party. Not just a party for dancing and dining, but for sharing ideas. The, the guests were scientists like Michael Faraday, who studied electromagnetism, and Charles Wheatstone, who invented a device to display three-dimensional images. But for Ada, the one who mattered most was Charles Babbage. He was a famous mathematician and inventor, just like Ada wanted to be. Though she was only 17 and Babbage 41, Ada spoke about her math with a precision and understanding that impressed him. So much so that Babbage invited her to visit his laboratory. Ada brought her journals to show him her own experiments and inventions. Their tea grew cold as they talked about their love of machines and mathematics. Babbage didn't see her as simply a young girl. He treated her like the fellow mathematician and inventor she already was. Before, numbers had been Ada's only friends. Now Babbage was a friend as well. Babbage showed Ada his difference engine, a revolutionary mechanical calculator. He knew Ada would understand how it, his extraordinary invention worked. Ada did more than understand. She couldn't wait to see the difference machine and engine in action. She chose to have the machine solve a simple problem, one she could easily do in her head. 15 times 12. Reaching inside the machine, Ada rotated the metal columns until the numbers 15 and 12 appeared. With a crank of the handle, she powered the calculator. Gears clicked and turned. Cylinders pumped up and down. Small hammers clanked as the numbers spiraled upward, guiding the machine to the correct solution. After a few turns of the handle, the answer appeared on the final column. 180! It was right! Babbage told Ada he had designed an even more powerful device, a mechanical computer. His analytical engine would solve harder problems by working through them step by step. It could even make decisions all by itself, a true thinking machine. The only trouble was Babbage hadn't actually built it. Ada carried home a stack of Babbage's lab books, 30 in all, filled with his notes about the analytical engine. Back in her room, she studied the technical descriptions and pored over the diagrams. Ada quickly realized that without instructions, the analytical engine would be a useless pile of metal parts. It needed numbers to make it work. Her numbers, her friends. Ada decided to create an algorithm, a set of mathematical instructions for the analytical engine. The, en the machine could follow these instructions and solve a complex math problem, one difficult to figure out by hand. She worked for months revising her instructions. Countless lines and numbers of numbers and symbols poured onto her journal pages. After checking and rechecking her algorithm through the night, Ada finally laid down her pen. She hadn't found any errors. The world's first computer program was complete. The gears of Ada's mind whirred with possibilities for future inventions, all controlled by computing machines. She imagined computers would someday design powerful flying engines and majestic sailing ships. They would draw pictures and compose music. They would play games and help with schoolwork. Because Babbage never finished building the analytical engine, Ada never got to see her program run. 
but the influence of her work lives on. More than 100 years before the invention of the modern computer, Ada had glimpsed the future and had created a new profession, computer programming. Ada couldn't know that one day a computer language would be named after her, Ada. And one of Ada's uses? To guide modern flying machines. A girl who needed crutches ended up flying after all. Uh, that's the end. There's some author notes at the end if you want to come, come into Epic and read them. Um, and there's a, byline, uh, a timeline of her life. Um, so unfortunately, she died very young at the age of 36. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this story.